Uh, so after Bourne learns how to talk, uh, there's this this issue where where Rachel is recovering from being attacked by another scavenger, and she has time on her hands uh, inside the balcony cliffs, and she begins to talk to Bourne more. And so this is that section. Bourne made me happy, but happiness never made anyone less stupid. During my recovery, I had such trouble remembering what waited for me outside, as if I had to learn it all over again, despite having been taught so many lessons. All kinds of dangerous ideas entered my head while groggy. I was, it was as if the little foxes and other animals out in the desert ran in circles around my mind, barking and kicking up dust, stopping only to stare at me from afar and encourage me to wander. I kept fantasizing that I lived in a real apartment in one of the stable sanctuaries from my past. Everything would be fine. I just had the flu or a cold and was out sick until I got better. And when I was better, what would I do? When I was better, I would go back to university and to some part-time job. I would complete my studies so I could become a writer. Because the ruined city was just a bad dream, and my life as a scavenger was a bad dream. And soon I would wake up, and the visions of almost drowning, of losing my parents, would prove to be an illusion too. The longer Wick expended time and energy protecting me, the more ideas like this took hold. But minds find ways to protect themselves, build fortifications, and some of those walls become traps. Even as I started to walk around my rooms with Bourne, even as I ventured out into the corridors, it was so sad a fantasy that I brushed by without recognition the revenants that told me it was a lie. Yet those sequestered weeks also contained some of my best memories because of Bourne. Wick was gone a lot, spying on his rival's movements, which left Bourne and me ever more time to explore. He'd gotten tired of being cooped up in the apartment. On days when I knew Wick would be out for hours, I'd take Bourne into the hallways, prickly with the fear of discovery and stiff from my slow healing wounds. It was all a construct by then, this game of not telling Wick that Bourne could talk. He had to know, but because I never admitted it and Wick never brought it up, Bourne became an open secret that existed between us like a monster all its own. It made me reckless as if I wanted Wick to confront me, that somehow our relationship would be a total lie if Wick didn't confront me. Ignoring the strain on my own body, Bourne and I would race down dim-lit, dust-covered corridors, Bourne afraid of colliding, congealing with the wall and tripping over his own pseudopods, wailing as he laughed, you're going too fast, or why is this fun? Which just made me laugh, too. When you don't have to run, and you have the chance to run for the hell of it, it becomes a strange luxury. Then we'd collapse at the end of the hall, and Bourne, in addition to his usual observation that he was hungry and needed a snack, I now let him hunt lizards and rats to blunt his appetite, would ask some of his questions. He never stopped asking them, as if he were really ravenous for the answers. This dust is so dry. Why is dust so dry? Doesn't it need some wet for balance? Then it's mud. What's mud? Wet dirt. I haven't seen mud yet. No, you haven't. Not yet. I would show Bourne a photo of a weasel in an old encyclopedia, and he'd point with an extended tentacle and say, Ooh, long mouse, which brought me quickly to the idea of teaching Bourne to read, except he picked that up on his own. When we played hide-and-seek, I'd sometimes find him hunched up on the edge of a midden of discarded books, two tentacles extending out from his sides to hold a book, and a single tentacle tipped with light curling down from the top of his head. He would study any number of topics and had no real preferences, his many eyes enthusiastically moving back and forth as he read the pages at a steady clip. I don't believe he needed light or eyes to read, but I know he liked to mimic what he saw me doing. Perhaps he even thought it was polite to seem to need light, to seem to need eyes. But the truth is, I don't really know what he thought or how he thought it, because most of the time, I just had his questions. <laughs>